Hello, today we are doing chapter three, section five in algebra one. Our essential question is how can you describe the graph of the equation y equals mx plus b? This is an equation that you've probably seen before. Um, a lot of times it's referred to as the slope intercept form. The slope is m and that is um, kind of given right here, rise over run, which is your changes in y's over the change of your x, which is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. If I were taking notes, I would definitely pause on this, make sure you understand everything on here. Um, that formula is something that you definitely want to have down in your notes. So here we want to go ahead and describe our slope and we can do this by looking off of our graph. Here, our rise is four. It's going up four units. Our run is six. It's going to the right six units. So we also have our order pairs. You can tell the difference of our y's gives us four. That's our run. The difference of our x's give us 6. That's our run. I'm sorry, the 4 is our rise, the 6 is our run. You get 4 over 6, which reduces to 2 thirds. Let's do the same thing over here. It's going down 3 units, and it's going to the right 2. So this is going to have a negative slope. The difference of our x or difference of our y's is going to be negative one minus two, which is negative three. That means down three units. The difference of our x's is two minus zero, which gives us positive two. So our rise over our run is negative three halves. Our slope is negative three halves. Try doing it on your own on these three. Hit pause when you think you have the answers. Go ahead and hit play and check your answers. Our one is a negative slope. It's going down two units and to the right five. This is a positive. It is going up four and to the right six. And then when you reduce that, it's going to be two thirds. This is a positive slope, 7 over 3. It's going to the up 7, right 3. All right, the points represented in each table lie on a line. That's an important piece of information. How can you find the slope of each line from the table? And what is the slope of each one? This sounds complicated, but it's really not a bad thing to do. What you're going to do is you're going to choose any two points. You have four points here and you can choose any of them. So we've got 4 comma 20 and 7 comma 40. Just chose the first two. So that's going to be my first order pair x1 y1. That's my second order pair x2 y2. Sometimes I'll even write that x1 y1 over it. So now it's just going to be a matter of subtracting 14 minus 20 over 7 minus 4. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is doing x over y. Remember, it's always the difference of your y's over the difference of your x's. So the slope on this one is negative 2. On number or letter B, what I notice right away is I have the same y value. So we're going to kind of do the same thing. We're going to choose two points. In this case, shows the first and the last. Y2 minus Y1 is just going to be 2 minus 2. X2 minus X sub 1 is just going to be 5 minus negative 1. I get 0 over 6, which is 0. So my slope is 0. If I were to graph that, that would be a horizontal line. On C, there's no change in X. So I'm going to choose two points. 
negative 3, 0, and negative 3, 6. I'm choosing two that are in the middle this time. So I'm going to do the difference of my y's, 6 minus 0. The difference of my x's, negative 3 minus negative 3. And I notice that I get a 0 in the denominator. Well, 0 in the denominator is not allowed. It's undefined. So the slope is undefined. Take a second, try these two on your own, hit pause when you think you have the answers, hit play, and check yourself. You should get a slope of 5 over 2, and we want to leave it as 5 over 2. You don't want to get an improper fraction. It's awkward if you give a slope as 2 and 1 half. 5 over 2 is a better way of doing it. On number 5 here, your x's are constant, so there's no change. You end up with 0 in the denominator. It's undefined. All right, I would hit pause and make sure you've got this information down. You should be able to look at any graph and know if it's positive, negative, slope of 0, or an undefined slope. So, at the very beginning of our essential question, we were talking about y equals mx plus b. Well, we've talked about m. Our b is our y-intercept. Where is it crossing the y-axis? That point is at 0, comma, b. A y-intercept is always going to start with a 0 because x is 0. It's on the y-axis. You're not going right or left at all. So we want to find the slope and the y-intercept of the graph. Well, our slope is what's in front of the x. Our b is what's being added or subtracted. So in this case, our slope is 3. Our y-intercept is negative 4. On b, if you want to, you can put that 0x in front of it. So the slope is 0, and the y-intercept is 6.5. Putting that 0 in front of it just puts it in that y equals mx plus b. There's no x, so there's 0 x's. That's why we can put that 0x in front of it. On c, we're going to have to solve for y first. We've done that before. We're going to add 5x to both sides. Then we're going to have to divide by negative 1, and you get y equals negative 5x plus 2. The slope is negative 5. The y-intercept is 2. All right, go ahead. Try these three on your own. Hit pause when you think you have the answers. Hit play and check yourself. On number 8, I think that was the tricky one. You needed to subtract x first. And then you divide by 4. And I usually write it as under each term is being divided by 4. So you get y equals negative 1 fourth x. And then that 10 over 4 reduces to 5 over 2. And that's where they came up with those numbers. On this one, we want to identify the x-intercept. So you might want to ask yourself, if I'm looking for that x-intercept, what do I want to let equal 0? I was thinking about just doing it algebraically. They did it graphically. So let's go ahead and talk about this. They rewrote it in slope-intercept form of y equals negative 2x plus 2. My slope is negative 2. My y-intercept is 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot my y-intercept, which is 2. Then my slope is negative 2. That's rise over run. So I'm going to go down 2, right 1. So from that point, right 1, down 2. It 
crosses at 1, 0. So the x-intercept is 1. I actually think the better way of doing that would be to let y equal 0 and solve it that way. But this way works as well, too. All right, a linear function g models a relationship in which the dependent variable increases three units for every one unit the independent variable increases. They're giving you a lot of math speak on this one. You might need to break that down. Um, ask yourself, what is the dependent? What is the independent? X or Y? So graph G when G of 0 equals 3. Identify the slope, the Y-intercept, the X-intercept of the graph. Well, I would start with this piece of information right there. That's like an ordered pair. 0, 3. And then the dependent variable increases three units for one unit, the independent variable increases. Well, x is typically your independent variable. y depends on x, so that is your dependent variable. So when the dependent variable increases by three, the change in y is three. When the independent variable increases, the change in x is 1. So your slope is 3 over 1 or 3. I think that's kind of an awkward way of saying it, but that's something that you should be able to break down. You should know that your independent variable are your x's, your dependent are your y's. So we start with our point of 0, 3, and from that point we're going to use our slope. They went left one, down three. You could have also gone right one, up three. Both ways are acceptable. So the y-intercept is three, the x-intercept is negative one. I would definitely want to use graph paper if I were doing this problem as well, and a straight edge to draw the line. Take a second. Try these on your own on number 10 and 11. You're going to need to put those into slope intercept. So on 10, I would start by subtracting 3x from both sides of the equal sign. On number 11, I would subtract x and then divide by 2. I would go ahead and hit pause. Try these four problems when you think you have the answer. Hit the play button and check your answers. All right, my y-intercept is negative 4, my slope is 4, that means I go up 4, right 1, my y-intercept is 1. Here, when I put it into slope-intercept form, I get y equals negative 3x minus 3, my y-intercept is negative 3, go up 3, left 1, and my y-intercept is negative 1. My y-intercept is going to be 3, and my x-intercept is 6. On number 12, that's like the previous one we just did, our slope is negative 2 fifths because the dependent variable decreases, so think of that as negative 2, for every five units, the independent variable increases. That would be your x values, which is five, so negative two over five. And they're also telling us h of zero is four. That's our y-intercept. So put a dot at zero, four, and then you're gonna go down two, left, right five, put another dot, use a straight edge, draw your line. You can do that a couple times, down two, right five, put a dot, and that gives you your x-intercept of 10. All right, let's do a word problem. A submersible that is exploring the ocean floor begins to ascend to the surface. Ascend means to go up. The elevation h in feet of the submersible 
is modeled by the function h of t equals 650t minus 13,000, where t is the time in minutes since the submersible began to ascend or be, since it began to go up. Graph the function, identify its domain and range, and interpret the slope and the intercepts. So let's understand this problem. We know that the function models the elevation. We are asked to graph the function and identify the domain and range and interpret the slope. So our plan is going to be to graph. Let's go ahead and do it. Um, so when we graph it, it's going to look something like this. Our y-intercept is negative 13,000. It's going up 650 and then write 1. This is what the graph should look like. So the domain is happening from 0 to 20 because we can't have a negative time. And the range is going to be from negative 13,000 to 0 because it's a sum of range. It can't be above. So the top value is going to be 0. Its lowest value is negative 13,000. And it takes 20 minutes to reach an elevation of zero feet or sea level. You look back. Did we do it correctly? We sure did. All right. So overall. That is a reasonable answer. Try this one on your own. If the elevation of the source pool is modeled by h of t equals 500t minus 10,000, graph, identify the domain and range, interpret the slope and the intercepts. Go ahead and hit pause when you're ready to check your answers. Hit play. So this is my graph. Again, my lowest point is negative 10,000, so that's as low as that submersible where the submarine goes, and it's going up to sea level, so that's zero. So the range is from negative 10,000 to zero. That's my y values. And the range, it's going from zero to 20. That is my domain. So the slope is 500. That means that its lowest point was about 10,000. And it took 20 minutes to reach sea level. All right. Hope you enjoyed. As always, you're welcome to come to iPaths or MathLab.